Yes, hello everybody, a very warm welcome to the second episode of our virtual lecture series, Innovation. A big hello to all of you in front of your screens uh, here on Zoom or on YouTube. My name is Dana Strauss. I welcome you on behalf of the easy to you Alliance, the easy to you family and uh, its research project, as you just read, of um, research and innovation for cities and citizens. We have um, in our second episode today, Beatrice Re from the University of Pavia and the topic sustainable and circular entrepreneurship. And also our special guest, you can see here, Alberto Bresan, the founder of the circular fashion uh, company CY. Yes, with the virtual lecture series um, Innovation, we'd like to celebrate innovation across our easy to you Alliance. And I think most of you are members of the easy to you Alliance and all the easy to you partner cities. And as you know, uh, our mission is to build a pan-European campus for you and our work packages uh, specifically will deal uh, with the topics of innovation of civic engagement and also entrepreneurship. Today's episode, um, as you've already heard, uh, deals with, and let me go quickly back, um, deals with a very important topic of uh, sustainable and circular entrepreneurship. And uh, if we look at the current state of our home planet, um, we realize one thing, we have to act now, we need to move faster and we need to perform smarter. An economy that is moving towards the direction of uh, sustainability and circularity is one absolutely vital step in the right direction. So it is my great honor and pleasure to announce that we, with our two guests, uh, Beatrice and uh, Alberto, we have uh, two excellent guests that enlighten the scientific as well as the practical business side of the topic. And now we, I can move to this slide. And um, Beatrice, our keynote speaker today, she's a postdoc researcher and PhD candidate in applied economics and management at the University of Bergamo and Pavia. And her thesis, as you can see, has very, very uh, relevant title, Value Co-Creation Processes in Circular Entrepreneurship, a Problematizing Review of the Value Co-Creation Concept and Mixed Methods Re Research. She also uh, has been a visiting PhD fellow, and I'm, um, I think is particularly in the concept of our easy to you Alliance, particularly a mentionable fact that you, Beatrice, visited uh, Turku, one of the easy to you partner cities. So that's very, uh, very interesting. And we are all excited to see uh, your presentation now. And of course, after that, uh, we will discuss further with Alberto and uh, we're really looking forward. So Beatrice, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dana. Thanks a lot for this awesome presentation. And I really enjoyed also the, the video at the beginning, very powerful, <laughs> energetic. So <laughs> I hope everybody is uh, awake and uh, ready for, the, um, for, for this lecture. Uh, as Dana said, we are going to have at uh, the beginning, um, as you can see from, uh, uh, okay, let's wait, okay. 
Okay, so here from the, um, the structure of the lecture, you can see that we can start with a uh, theoretical and interactive lecture about sustainable and circular entrepreneurship. Uh, and uh, I will kindly, kindly ask you, uh, I have a few questions to ask you, uh, so please reply in the chat, but we will leave the, um, uh, the Q&A session at the end of the lecture. Uh, so after the, the great speech of our uh, guest, Alberto Bressan, uh, which is founder of the Circular Firm CY, as uh, um, Dan has already uh, presented. Uh, so please, uh, think do, during the lecture and during Alberto's speech, feel free to think and then uh, um, think about the question you would like to, to make at the end of the, of the seminar. So let's, uh, I think it's time to start. Um, uh, first of all, uh, as an introduction, and as Dan has already mentioned before, uh, we are now uh, facing, um, we are now in this uh, situation where we, we are facing a, a strong environmental crisis. So the term sustainability is <laughs> becoming more and more um, uh, popular and uh, said also during the, the debate, the, the, polit the policy debate and the economic and, the, and politicians, uh, which is something that we appreciate a lot uh, because the situation now uh, and uh, the, the, the research is already uh, aware of the fact that we, uh, th there is a huge imbalance between the resources that we have and there's the demand of resources that is constantly growing. Uh, and the, the, the world the resources is extremely important, especially with respect to circular entrepreneurship, as I will tell you in a while. So please remember the term resources. And um, we, the, 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 the research is already showing that the global population will increase and the demand for resources will uh, increase in the next year and uh, uh, the trend uh, is that if the demand of resources will continue to grow uh, unfortunately as the global footprint network is uh, uh, as reported in 2050 uh, we will need around the three planet earth to sustain our society which is something that of course we, we won't have unless we, we look for other planets that is something we are already doing uh, uh, unfortunately the um, as a, I don't know if you have heard about the Earth Overshoot Day, uh, but uh, it is the day when uh, the demand of resources exceeds uh, the, the resources available. And the last year was uh, on the 29th of July, uh, 2021. So <laughs> a lot before the end of, uh, of the year. So we are really using so, uh, too, many, too, too many resources. Uh, so this is a question for you. I would like to, to ask since uh, we talk a lot about sustainability, about resources, but which are the human activities that are polluting the most? So that are cause uh, most of the pollution or CO2 emissions as you, as you prefer. Fast fashion, yes, Annabelle. Vehicles and industries, the food industry. Negative thoughts. <laughs> also, <laughs> I appreciate the answer. <laughs> Fashion, negative <laughs> meat production, cryptocurrencies, mining. Hmm, interesting, Lorenzo. You will tell us more about that in the Q and A session because you you may know more than uh, we do. <laughs> Life sciences, the web. What Dana sixty four ten email. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yes, okay, so nuclear energy, uh, plastic usage, okay, uh, coal consumption. Yes, they are all they are all um, correct, of course. They are all source of uh, of CO two emissions, and um, the big uh, um, let's say that um, as you can see from the on the picture on the on the right side, uh, the um, uh, the exactly uh, uh, the the energy production is uh, something that is really uh, impacting a lot. So uh, most of um, like the the big challenge challenge in the future uh, would be 
how to produce energy because we need energy for everything, for building, for uh, for for moving, uh, for industry. Uh, so actually, the energy, how to produce energy, is the big question mark in the next uh, for the next years and. Um, also, uh, the agriculture is something that is uh, uh, polluting and the use of, uh, of, uh, of land, uh, especially intensive farming that uh, uh, unfortunately is still uh, too much uh, present and also in the European uh, Union and uh, in, our, uh, in, uh, in the European Union and in developed countries, but also in developing countries. Uh, as you can see in the, on the left side, not all the countries are at the same level of CO2 emissions per capita, so per each um, uh, inhabitant. Uh, uh, there are countries that are uh, polluting the most, for instance, the United States and, uh, and Australia, and there are countries that are polluting less, uh, such as South America and, uh, and Africa. And uh, you can uh, write down some thoughts about that, uh, <laughs> like uh, why, why these countries are polluting less than uh, our countries. You can share thoughts if you, if you like to on the, in the chat. And uh, uh, unfortunately, this trend of, uh, uh, of emissions is something that uh, uh, is not stopping now. So we, we are constantly increasing the level of, uh, uh, of emissions. And um, uh, in 2050, we see that the uh, non-ECD countries are gonna uh, uh, have an increase also in, uh, in pollution, in emissions. And uh, there is also the, the huge problem of, uh, of course, the, the, all these emissions are causing, uh, uh, are causing an increase in temperature uh, that is worldwide, but uh, there are countries and, uh, and cities that are affected the most by the situation uh, and uh, the, the trend for the next years is, is uh, quite uh, worrying because uh, uh, we know that the increase in uh, also one degree uh, uh, is, is, has um, very bad effects on the whole planet uh, from the, 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 the at all levels also from the production side and uh, the, the, the life of, uh, of animals and everything. So it's uh, one degree a change in, um, in temperature as a, as a huge uh, effect on the whole planet. So how to, uh, once we have defined this scenario that uh, seem to be very <laughs> uh, worrying, uh, what we can do? <laughs> that, that's always the, the main question. Uh, to rethink about the, the, the way we live, <laughs> the way we produce, the way we, uh, we, we conceptualize the, the concept of waste. So uh, how it is, how, if you think also about everyday life, what is for you? Uh, what is for you um, uh, waste? Is it something that you use one day, one week, one month, one year? So what is waste and how we can consider it waste and how we can change the definition of waste? Then we need to combine uh, the economic objective with also the social and environmental ones, uh, following the so-called triple bottom line that we will um, also refer to shortly. So, and also what to do and who is responsible to do that because changing is something that uh, uh, it takes, uh, takes time, takes energy, takes uh, uh, commitment by all parties. And in this case, since it is um, a very radical uh, change that is needed, is a paradigmatic change. Uh, so it is not something that can, um, can happen from one day to the other. And all the people are, and all the, the, the stakeholders that you can see are involved in this change. Uh, so we have policy makers. Policy makers have a, a, a huge role because they, they can uh, define, of course, the rules, the rule of the game. They can define, uh, they can uh, make decisions at all levels. For example, the European Green Deal and the social development goals, they can regulate the market, uh, they, can, um, they can make huge decisions that are the ones that are impacting the most. As you can see, as you may have heard about COP26, uh, the, all the big of Earth, have, uh, not all, let's say, uh, lots of policymakers have met to, to define what to do in the next years. And uh, finding an agreement is uh, extremely important because uh, this is a problem a worldwide problem. It's not the problem of Italy, it's not the problem of Europe, it's not the problem of the US, 
is a, uh, a really something that, that affects uh, the entire planet. Then the firms, of course, can make an impact. Firms that are the focus of our analysis today uh, can change the way they produce, they can change the way uh, they uh, treat resources at all levels, not just the production, but at all organizational levels. Then we have citizens uh, that uh, are hit us uh, as a single citizen that can make uh, uh, their own decision and they can, uh, can decide what to buy, what not to buy, uh, where to live, uh, how to live, or to consume. So we, we, we have much power, although we, we think we are small and sometimes not that much uh, impactful. Then, of course, we have public institutions that are uh, those fostering, that can foster the debate, that can guide citizens, and they have a key role, though sometimes they also they are not considered, they, they are kind of uh, left, um, left behind, they don't feel like that much committed, so also uh, the role of uh, citizens in many cases is to, uh, to make an impact on uh, and to, 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 um, to convince the public institution that uh, uh, making decisions uh, in terms of sustainability and uh, especially um, local cities uh, is uh, extremely important. So, uh, what, so all these actors need to be uh, committed to, to this change, uh, but um, now we focus a bit more on, uh, um, on firms uh, that are our unit of analysis today. Uh, so we, we see that um, in, the, in, the, in the next in the, in the last years we, we've had an increase in, um, in number of sustainable entrepreneurs. Uh, what do they do, sustainable uh, entrepreneurs? What is sustainable entrepreneurship about? Here there is a definition um, by um, Schaltiger and uh, Waldner from the literature. Uh, and uh, what I would like to, um, to, to, um, to highlight is uh, the fact that what is, what is the focus on, uh, of sustainable entrepreneurs is uh, to provide benefit for the uh, larger, part, larger part of the society and larger group of stakeholders. And we'll see in a while uh, why it is important in a sustainable business model to take into account stay, stay multiple stakeholders. And uh, circular entrepreneurship can be considered as a subfield of sustainable entrepreneurship. Uh, and um, uh, it is, uh, let's say, more focused uh, because it uh, provides some key element uh, to tackle the situation. So if sustain sustainable entrepreneurship is more uh, on the surface of the problem, let's say, uh, circular entrepreneurship goes more deeper, goes into uh, the um, uh, really the logic of use of resources. As I told you before, resources is our keyword. Uh, and the aim is to, um, to close, to slow, to narrow the loop of resources uh, and the regenerate, reconstitute the natural capital. So it is a way uh, to create value, uh, to answer to a world's needs. And it is something that is disruptive by nature. And then we will uh, ask Alberto if uh, uh, also for him uh, being a circular entrepreneur is uh, something that is, he considers disruptive. <laughs> Um, as you can see from this uh, uh, from this picture, from um, a, a nice paper by Gesdoer Ferretal in 2018 uh, from the Journal of Cleaner Production, uh, we we have uh, we have these uh, differences between the traditional business model and then the gradual change towards sustainable business model and the circular business model. Uh, as I said before, the so, uh, building a sustainable business model and from the very beginning of the firm, so being talking about sustainable entrepreneurship, uh, means that uh, uh, additional value rather than money is taken into account, first of all. And uh, um, so the creation of value is something that is not just for the entrepreneur, but is the value for stakeholders, for the society at large. And uh, um, a, a long-term perspective is taken into account compared to a short-term perspective, uh, because uh, uh, you know that uh, being profit-oriented and being uh, focused on, on uh, um, 
the, the, the short term profit is something that uh, is not sustainable in itself. So you know that the word sustainability uh, has many meanings. And uh, uh, first of all, is sustainability in, uh, in time. So being sustainable for a firm is, first of all, also having a long term perspective. And uh, if uh, the stakeholders are not taken into account, uh, it's difficult for a firm to survive uh, by itself. Um, and also uh, looking at the, um, of course, the sustainability in the long term and sustainability in terms of uh, uh, environmental uh, logic, no, uh, the ecologic logic. So it's important to that uh, sustainable firm is born with the idea that uh, the planet is already taken into account in everyday um, organizational decisions. But uh, so what's the difference with the circular entrepreneurship and which steps are different? Uh, well, uh, the, um, uh, to, to the, according to the recent literature, uh, the, the idea is that with the circular entrepreneurship, there, is, uh, there are more focused ideas about what to do. So <laughs> it's more practical, let's say, it, it provides um, precise, uh, elements to, uh, to, to work with, to, uh, to focus on for an entrepreneur. As you can see in, uh, in this picture, the idea is to, uh, to, to close resource loops, to slow resource loops, to narrow resource loops. So uh, basically this, mean, this means that resources uh, cannot be wasted. They need to be to keep in the loop uh, as much as they can and to, um, to be reintroduced into the, into the value chains uh, to, to be reused, to be recycled, uh, to be used as much as they can. So the idea is to, uh, to consider waste as a resource. That's for me and um, also for the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, the basic idea of uh, circular building a circular business model and being a circular entrepreneur. Uh, so we have more precise uh, compared to sustainable to sustainability that as we have seen is something more is something broader and uh, if something is broader the risk is to, uh, to to not to focus on what to do <laughs> how to be sustainable how to be so with circular economy the idea is this one that there, there are more precise uh, and actionable, let's say, thing to do to focus on to uh, to re to revise the the concept of uh, of waste and uh, reintroduce waste into uh, the into the loop. Uh, the um, you know the the, the traditional uh, traditional uh, business model uh, canvas. Uh, of um, Alexander Osterwalder has been revised in the in the in the, these years because uh, uh, it, um, to be to 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 create a new firm to to be a sustainable or circular entrepreneur uh, it's important to focus on a problem to be solved and to uh, a solution that can, a market solution that can uh, face and tackle the problem. And um, in, uh, as, as if you are very, if you are familiar with uh, this uh, this canvas, we see that uh, what is added, what has been added in this uh, compared to the previous one. Uh, in the bottom part, you can see that there is economic impact, environmental impact, and uh, and the social impact. So these three uh, elements, the so-called triple bottom line, cannot can need to go together. Uh, you cannot just think about the economic, uh, the revenue stream of a firm, but need to, to understand what do the firms do for the planet? What do the, the firm do for, uh, for the society? So you see that the firm is not more considered as a silo, but is something as a silo working for himself and for the profit generation, but is considered as a social actor, as, as an actor that can make an impact uh, upon the environment uh, he, he, the firm is, uh, is embedded in. So this is uh, something that uh, uh, circular and uh, sustainable circular entrepreneurs need to do since the very beginning of their uh, of the, the firm creation. And then we will also ask uh, uh, Alberto uh, what he thinks about uh, about this. Uh, another key element of uh, circular entrepreneurship uh, is the idea that uh, uh, that uh, customers, clients, or let's call them prosumers, there are many terms that have been advanced in the academic literature because uh, uh, the, 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 the clients are no more, are no more targets, are no more just uh, 
uh, target of, uh, of firms, but they are more co-creators. They are people that help the firm, to, uh, help the firm to, to create their value proposition initially, or even during the, the firm's path, during the firm's uh, the firm uh, life, everyday life. Um, uh, an example of um, of co-creation is the one uh, I, I is the one I found out uh, doing my research in the PhD uh, is a co-creation with in the firm's Apepac, which is producing envelopes made by uh, beeswax, and um, this firm is as co-created with its customers because uh, it really needed to understand since the very beginning how uh, how could this uh, novel package could be used in the so uh, they, they really needed the feedback from users and uh, um, they and before going to market and uh, they also need to understand how to dispose these uh, uh, these uh, these products after use uh, so th there is a constant feedback loops and the constant co-creation going going on between uh, the firm and the customers and th that we can call I prefer to call prosumers or uh, as even citizens because the citizens take part at, at many levels in the circular economy. Uh, for example, in some firms, they are uh, even uh, required to, to bring their, their clothes back, to bring uh, the product back to the, to the, to the, to the shop or to uh, the supermarkets, uh, or um, they, they are required to make an active uh, um, commitment to the firm's value proposition without customers. Uh, this, uh, and citizens in general, the, the circular economy uh, cannot, uh, the, we cannot change towards uh, cir the circular paradigm. And uh, this is um, a value proposition canvas of, of, um, of a firm that is uh, uh, Adidas that has made the partnership with Parley. And um, I just wanted to, uh, to give you this idea uh, that uh, um, uh, these firms, of course, need to be the circular entrepreneurs. Need to have a target. Need to have uh, not a target, but uh, um, co-creators and uh, some clients of um, they refer to. And who, how can uh, a circular entrepreneur think about uh, a market? What, which customers can, uh, which clients can first uh, adhere to a circular value proposition? And uh, in the case of Adidas, the the firms, the customers that have been identified are those uh, that uh, are not just looking for a fashionable good, or, or but are are people that are, that would like to to make an impact on uh, on the society, are uh, conscious customers and consumers. Uh, so the now uh, there is this um, let's say that may be considered as a niche so far, but uh, it is growing. Some the niche of conscious customers that are becoming more and more aware of uh, the, the environmental issues and are becoming more proactive in, uh, in taking part of the firm's uh, value proposition. And um, a key uh, distinction to be made uh, about circular entrepreneurship, uh, we, we talked a lot about uh, uh, this idea of, uh, of entrepreneurs that Create that generating new new that creating new firms that uh, uh, that find the market and um, we need to to distinguish because uh, uh, there are firms that are uh, that are born circular those firms that are um, that uh, are born with circular business model and uh, uh, there are also there are on the other hand uh, firms that uh, are uh, moving are in transition towards circularity. Uh, so, um, uh, of course, uh, uh, maybe you may know some firms that are that can be considered circular, that adopt a circular business model. I don't know if you if you know any. Uh, and uh, you can you can uh, add some examples of uh, born circular that uh, adopt the, the circular circular business model since the very beginning. So they try to to close, to narrow, and to, to slow the, the resource loops. And um, on the other hand, uh, now you, we hear a lot about, uh, about firms, established firms that are, are, are incorporating circular practices into their routine, into their business model. 
do you have an idea about um, some uh, firms? Yes, Lorenzo, Beyond Meat. It is a, a bone circular, right? Okay. Others that have ideas about uh, bone circular and uh, or that have heard, ah, uh, yes, uh, no, but Vinted. <laughs> you know, the, the advertising on Vinted that is becoming pervasive in everyday life. <laughs> Every time you open something, <laughs> there is Vinted, Vinted, and they, they probably invest a lot in, uh, uh, in, uh, in promotion. <laughs> But uh, th that is a platform. I, I don't know if you are familiar with Vinted. It is a platform enabling uh, a peer-to-peer -peer platform, let's say, that enables people to, to exchange their, their, old, their old garments, their old goods. And, um, and actually, it is, uh, it, is some, it, it is something that we, it is actually the, the, the idea of, uh, of, of um, reconceptualizing the concept of waste or the concept of unused resources, because uh, in that case, uh, we all have products at home that we don't use, and uh, we, we, we barely think about uh, ex selling them, exchanging them, while it is something that could be done um, in everyday life. And uh, it is something, when we have to buy something in the, in the, um, the concept of the linear economy, uh, the idea was that we 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 always need to buy something new and then to throw it away when when uh, when it, we cannot be used anymore. But uh, uh, by introducing the second hand, we 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 really um, uh, narrow the, the resource loop by keeping the products in the in the circle and avoiding the, the waste. And uh, Philips, uh, uh, yes, Philips refur refurbished systems. Uh, Yes, also, uh, this is a growing circular. And also, um, Matteo, yes, could IKEA be considered like Adidas first moving towards circular logic with the buyback furniture program? Yes, uh, but also uh, IKEA has developed uh, the, um, um, uh, what is called the program for uh, uh, leasing program for uh, furniture. So in that, even leasing is considered as a circular business model because in that case, you, you, your profit comes from uh, the, you, you pay, you pay this, the, the leasing service every month and you don't have to buy the furniture. So if you need it for one year, then you don't have to sell it, sell it or throw it away. So this is another, uh, way is, um, established firms like IKEA invest on uh, um, on changing their business model. So it's not just the traditional business model of selling, and that's it. But it is something changing, no? Uh, introducing new uh, new business models, new new ways of uh, a new approach to resources. This is a really new approach to resources. The idea of uh, of leasing a resource instead of of buying it. And um, also just water. I, I don't know just water. Uh, is it wh where it is? Uh, where it is from? Aman. Yeah. Also, also H and M. Uh, is, yes, it is uh, collecting textile for the use. <clears throat> of course, then we need to to be aware that uh, uh, yeah the, of the these uh, growing circular firms. We need to be aware of what they do exactly. To, to see whether it is something related to greenwashing or not, because you know uh, the difference with born circular, born circular since, it's since the very beginning they have a problem to be solved, a solution to be solved, and they they have this sustainability business model canvas in their mind. While growing circular, it depends. Sometimes uh, the risk is that they are, they are trying to to follow the uh, the trend, and they. Uh, of course, they, they, they need to have a competitive advantage. They cannot uh, stay behind this, uh, this trend, but it is something true. It is something um, 
uh, that is always transparent. Do we know everything about uh, uh, the life cycle of the product? Uh, or sometimes it's just some it's just greenwashing. It is something we need to to be aware of and to uh, to to understand when we look at firms' websites and uh, when we look at advertising because advertising are very are very simple in their words and uh, uh, as we said before, sustainability is uh, is a can be a tricky a tricky concept. Um, I uh, also yeah, growing circular Apple remove your chargers. Yes, that has also been quite a controversial uh, move. Uh, some someone said yeah, they, they are trying to to save up money. Uh, so in that case, uh, is it uh, truly uh, is it truly the, the the willingness to be sustainable, to be circular, or is it something made for other purposes? Uh, Dell Technologies, yes, growing circular, recycling, using recycled resources to produce as well as leasing goods, yes, yes, definitely. So you are, you have many, many, many ideas. Uh, in the energy system, there is Givo, an interesting patent ongoing for the development of aircraft biofuels. So many energizer is trying to recycle the batteries. Okay, also Microsoft, uh, the new Microsoft mouse. So yes, we, we, we you have um, you have many ideas, maybe more. As you noticed, you have more um, connection, more ideas regarding growing circular rather than born circular. Is it right? You, you are more familiar because uh, if you yes, so you are confirming that. Uh, um, Yes. Okay. So why? We, we, basically, because they are, they 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 are trying to they they make advertising first of all. Uh, then they with the website they are uh, they they know how to communicate. They are already they are firms that have been established for years. So they 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 know how to communicate how to to say okay now we are changing now we are doing this recycled product now we are um, we are collecting uh, materials post use materials so um, okay so board circular uh, are firms uh, that need need, need to, to to find their own uh, need to find their own place and need to uh, to grow and to help probably um, big companies to, uh, to, to, to find solutions. And uh, they can be, as I like to, to think, I like to think that uh, bone circular firms are a spotlight to, to change. So they, they are actually those ones that are finding uh, new solutions and, and innovative ways of uh, uh, of uh, um, of doing circular economy, and sometimes they are those that are influencing even big companies in their decision, in their way of thinking. And then it will be very interesting to that. That, that is a key, uh, an interesting topic of conversation. Of uh, in the, we can uh, put it forward during the Q and A session uh, with Alberto because he will tell us his uh, experience, and he, he will. I'm sure he has a lot to to say about this relationship with the. <laughs> Ciao Alberto, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and um, uh, so okay. So this is um, uh, you. You are still putting on many ideas. So the the, the audience is very active. We like this active audience that is uh, uh, saying growing circular. The idea of being good after increasing their profits. Uh, yes, yes. Being good is uh, quite <laughs> is uh, yes the idea of being good. It's the idea that now the trend. It's not just a trend. That's the point. Uh, the um, uh, the point is that it's not a trend. It's something that uh, need to be done. It's a change uh, that uh, need to be need to be done. Uh, so also big firms know exactly that this change need to be done. Uh, and need to find the solution for 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 this change, and maybe they they can find a solution also together with born circular firms that are those that maybe don't have that much constraints uh, for for to to change, you know, because changing the, a firm 
that is established is something, and we experience it in Italy a lot, uh, for the status quo bias. So the idea that changing is something requiring much resources and, um, and uh, it's not easy, it's not easy. Uh, just uh, another comment regarding born circular and growing circular. Uh, we don't have to make the mistake of thinking that uh, born circular firms are uh, small ones and uh, the big, the um, uh, growing circular are just big firms because actually there are growing circular firms that are small, medium, and uh, there are also born circular that are big firms. For example, also in Italy, we have this Saviola Holding Company, which is, uh, uh, which is, um, it, it has been established, uh, I think, 40, 50 years ago. Uh, so if you want to give a look at it for those, uh, for the Italians, sorry, I'm a bit biased myself <laughs> in my research. Um, but we also have uh, Patagonia that I'm sure that lots of you know, I mean, uh, all of you know. Um, so of course now we 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 see that one circular we can say that are mostly uh, small medium firms because uh, because in the next in the last years we have this great hype around the sustainability and circularity so also we have much funds as we said before so the policymakers are uh, helping uh, with this with the um, with the with the with their funds and. Uh, uh, we are helping uh, entrepreneurs that uh, uh, let's say purposeful entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship that uh, is not limited to um, profit oriented view, but is including uh, the social and environmental uh, aspects in their uh, business model. Uh, so now uh, we we can. We can focus on our uh, our key firm, our uh, uh, main example of this uh, seminar um, about CY. CY is a firm that I had the, the big chance to know during my uh, PhD path <laughs> that lasted actually in uh, uh, October, uh, the end of the, no, the end of November. Uh, what did I do? Uh, just a few words about my my thesis, just to 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 tell you uh, the connection with this uh, born circular firm. So in my thesis, I've interviewed uh, many uh, born circular firms in Italy, but also in uh, in Finland, uh, where I did my uh, visiting uh, time, my visiting month in the University of Turku, which is part of the EC2U network, as uh, Dana uh, said before. And uh, uh, what would they do? I interviewed the born circular firms and also each of the uh, of the actor in, within the ecosystem that um, were co-creating value with the uh, with the born circular. Why? Because the idea was that, as I said before, we I start, we started with my supervisor with the idea that uh, co-creating value uh, is uh, fundamental to make this change towards the circular economy creating value with customers, but not just customers, also with uh, suppliers, also with uh, distributors, also with uh, public institutions, um, with partners. And uh, um, I think CY is one of the greatest example in this sense, uh, as uh, Alberto will tell us uh, in shortly, because uh, his partners are fundamental. You can, you can have an idea, about how to reuse, how to uh, reuse a material, how to recycle it, but you may not have the, the skills. You may not have the internal skills to do that. Uh, you need to, to go to another firm that is, that, um, is experienced in uh, recycling, reusing and say, okay, I have this idea. How, how, we, can, how can we can get it forward? How we can maybe create a new material? How we can um, uh, find ways? To, how we can find new partners? How we can distribute these products? And, um, and so partnering with these uh, firms uh, for uh, Alberto, Urtex Fidati and the Cooperative Insieme has been a key to uh, develop its business models. So the, the message that I would like to, to leave to, to all of you and to all the aspiring <laughs> circular entrepreneurs is uh, partnering and uh, finding other actors to, um, to, to, to find a solution to the problem that we, we, we uh, identified before no? in the circular business model, uh, in the, in the um, business model canvas. 
there is a problem. As a circular entrepreneur, maybe I have a solution to this problem. But if I have the solution, doesn't mean that I can do it by myself. <laughs> I need to, to find partners, clients, complying clients, to explain clients, uh, which is my solution? Is it working? Are the clients willing to, uh, to co-create with me? to test maybe this, a new product, to give me suggestions, feedback about the product. Is it working or is it myself that I'm just thinking about a market that, that doesn't exist? <laughs> so um, these are huge questions. And um, now I, I, I leave the floor to, to Alberto. Please uh, think about your questions. And then in a half an hour, we will start the Q&A session. So get ready for, for that. Alberto, the, the floor is, uh, is yours. Thank you, Beatrice. Thank you, AC, to you for hosting me. It's a great pleasure for being here today. And I would like to start exactly from uh, the last sentence of Beatrice. No? The network is the most important thing. If you want to start a new business or if you want to turn around an existing business, uh, in my case, uh, I've been lucky enough. I had the chance to work uh, on those of on both of these situations. No? I was working for a big uh, American corporation um, and they asked me to lead uh, a global uh, business uh, and the network was crucial to turn around uh, an already existing business uh, of a, a really established uh, firm. Then once I've decided to get with Simone and uh, with other uh, guys from my previous uh, working experience uh, to create something new, once again, it was uh, all about uh, networking uh, uh, to create a business. Uh, give me the chance to uh, share with you my presentation uh, should be this one. Here we go. Here we go. So, um, as said, I was working uh, in a really well-known uh, corporate uh, American corporation, uh, and together with Simone, uh, over the last uh, few months of my staying there. Uh, we were always asking ourselves, what should we do? What could we do differently no? to uh, contribute to a situation where um, it's clear we cannot go ahead like this on the fashion industry? Uh, all the alarms were bipling, okay, beep, 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 beep. Everything is, un, uh, un, how, how can I say, out of control in the fashion industry if we talk about sustainability, environmental sustainability in this particular case. because. Because as uh, someone of you were uh, reporting a few minutes ago, is the second most polluting industry uh, worldwide. Uh, it's responsible for the 20% of water consumption. Imagine that to produce a t-shirt, on average, uh, it takes uh, uh, 2.8 thousand, 3 thousand liters. That is the equivalent of uh, uh, water that uh, each of us uh, drink in a three years time. So. Uh, we, um, we invest uh, three years of water to produce a t-shirt that is worn on average five to seven times uh, prior to be thrown away. So it's crazy how many water we are, uh, how we are uh, I can say, uh, wasting just to produce one t-shirt. Then going further, 10% uh, of the uh, CO2 emissions uh, can be uh, referred to the fashion industry as well as the production of uh, pesticides and insecticides for the growing of the cotton. And the worst part is 85% of what we are producing end up in landfills uh, really quickly. So there's not a really circular plan behind the fashion industry. But the good news is that uh, more and more organizations are um, creating ways to make circular what it was not supposed to be circular up to a few months ago. So we started with this idea of mine, how we can do things differently. I got a daughter, she's a eight years old little princess, and the idea is constantly how we can do things in order to let my daughter and her friends uh, a planet good as the planet I found during the 80s, 
Okay, so everything starting saying, okay, let's start from the very beginning, which are the pillars. So we design, we produce, and we distribute apparel, basically. But at the same time, we want to transmit information. We want to give some alert to our customers. Um, how we can do that? So we built that everything around the, uh, some pillars. Uh, let me skip to this one. So the four pillars uh, around our business is a very short supply chain, meaning where we are producing our products, uh, the closer they are uh, compared to our HQ, our uh, warehouse uh, that is located here on the northern part of Italy, the lower is the CO2 emission on the environment. So we are trying to produce everything uh, in Italy and uh, on the northern part uh, of Italy uh, in particular. No? Uh, the closer it is the production, the lower it is the amount of CO2 released uh, on the environment. First pillar. Second pillar, how, which are the materials we are using, the fabrication we are using. First of all, we are trying to use only organic materials for the organic fabrication cotton, for instance, and recycled materials for the synthetic fibers, polyester, polyamide, nylon. So we are trying to use only recycled fabrication. So using something already existing, but is turned into something new, recycled, or something organic, cotton, that doesn't require so many chemistry to uh, be grown up. So we're trying to reduce the chemistry used or the new virgin materials used. Then how we are packing our product, we are trying to pack everything into a, a compostable packaging. So you receive the product, you throw the packaging directly on the recycle bin because everything is compostable. Imagine that a lot of products are using polyester, PPL, a lot of plastic that takes up to thousand years to be uh, that biodegrade by the environment, no? With our packaging, we can take up to three months to completely um, be back to zero in terms of impact. Then the distribution of the products. So we are trying to uh, compensate the CO2 emission of our logistic uh, using a carbon neutrality model. So we can emit uh, on the environment oxygen to compensate the emission of CO2 uh, thanks to a dashboard that is tracking how much, CO, how many uh, kilograms of CO2 we are generating. So it's a smart way to uh, reduce, in a way, the impact of our logistic. And then coming to the focal point, uh, we uh, have thought that the circular way to get back the user clothing is, uh, of our customers uh, can be a very good uh, way to minimize the impact uh, of our business. Let me step back for a second uh, on uh, how what we decided to do since day zero. We decided to be a, an innovative startup. That means we get to invest a large amount of our turnover in research and development uh, in order to have uh, always the latest solution on the market uh, available on our business model. Then we are a benefit corporation that is a, a juridical statement that uh, um, give us the uh, chance to propose every year on top of our uh, bilancio, the uh, economics uh, no, report we are forced to present to the local administration. Also a, a relazione di impatto, it's a, a, an impact report uh, that is uh, uh, given for, uh, it's given, it's mandatory, sorry, every year, where you got to pose in clear all the actions you want to take for the planet and for the people that are in a way working uh, close to your organization. So it's a way to say, okay, it's not a one-way direction. We are taking resources, but it's even a way to force uh, the organization to give them back something in a way to rebalance uh, the uh, I take, but I give situation. Then we are, big, we are a big corp. A big corp is an American organization, uh, is an American certificate that once again, uh, uh, detect, uh, no, uh, in a way, investigate which are the uh, companies that uh, are uh, acting in a good way for the people and for the planet, uh, and uh, uh, give us a kind of certificate that is really hard to get. Uh, it took nine months for us to get the B Corp certification because it's really serious, the, uh, the path to get the certification. But at the end of the day, it's a kind of mark saying, okay, these guys uh, are doing their best uh, 
to uh, organize a business uh, at the lowest uh, in terms of imp impact for people and plan. Okay. It happens one day that we said, okay, we are producing locally. We are using just certified materials. Uh, our packaging is sustainable and compostable. Uh, we are compensating the CO2. But what about the products that the people, our consumer customers, has already on their wardrobe, no? So the idea was to get back the used clothes they don't want to use any longer, give them a kind of green bonus, say, okay, thank you for giving us back your not used garments, and give them the chance to track what we're doing with the used clothes we are collecting. I was reading on the Q&A uh, how you can detect, uh, in a way, the greenwashing. There's no many ways to do that. The first arm we got uh, is the transparency. And that's why we are uh, acting with a QR code that a customer can scan to track in real time how we are treating the used clothes uh, that we are receiving from our customers. Now, just to give you an example, this is the hang tag. Uh, is the same that you can see here on the on my screen. Uh, you uh, sc you scan with your mobile the first hand tech and you apply the second one on the product you leave in store or you give us back uh, uh, with the, if you buy uh, with an e-commerce uh, platform, and you can in real time track uh, what we are doing with your user garments and that's the icon you can see on your mobile phone to track uh, your user clothes. And this is the bin you find in store. First of all, as I was saying, just to incentivate the model, we are giving directly back the 20% of the amount invested on buying a CY garment. So we are not forcing you to buy another and a further garment. We just give you back what you have already spent to buy one of our garments. So it's not incentivating something more on top of what you really need. So it's buy what you need, full stop, and then you get a, a reward on acting, on behaving in a sustainable way. Then you can track everything. What uh, um, Beatrice was saying earlier, we have created a net with a, a social cooperative, this uh, Onlus, it's a no-profit cooperative. Uh, basically, uh, we receive everything. We sort everything depending on the quality of a user clothing we are receiving back. So. Uh, imagine we receive a, a sweatshirt of yours. It's really good. Um, the, uh, the guy in charge of the sorting uh, said that it's really good. It's resold as second hand by the cooperative. You receive a beep on your mobile saying, okay, thank you for giving us back your user garments. It has been resold by the cooperative. The amount of money that we receive is left to the cooperative to support operation. So it's something we are not taking back. It's a way to invest in a cooperative that is doing a good job on reselling user clothes. Imagine, this is a, a, a nice information, that if each one of us would wear for nine more months what we have already on our armchair in our houses, uh, we will reduce of the 33% the CO2 emissions related to the production of uh, textiles. So it's really important to extend the life cycle of the already existing products that are still perfect. In 60% of the cases, what we are receiving is perfect. So it's brand new. So there's no, no, um, there's no absolutely, um, no way to do not use once again these products. So it, it has been, they are sanitized and then they are resold as second end. Then if they are okay, what we are receiving might not that good, they are given to people in need. So to people that cannot afford not even the buying of a new user garment. So we work with Humanitas, with Caritas, with some charity organization to uh, give uh, to people in need, homeless and people in need, uh, what we are receiving from our customer. And this happens in 20% of the cases, so it's a very good mix. Then uh, it uh, happens that it's, if it's very poor, uh, it's uh, uh, scrapped or it's uh, spotted, uh, so it cannot be resold or it, it cannot be reused. We bring everything to Trento, to Aerotex Filati, that is the third partner 
that Beatrice was uh, were uh, mentioning, where they regenerate what we are providing them. So if it's cotton, it became uh, fulfilling for sofas. If it's uh, synthetic, they are melted and then they became something. They, they can become something uh, uh, new tomorrow morning. Uh, if it's wool, it can be reused once again for the production of uh, wool products. So um, it's really interesting how we are able to reuse the 15% of what we are getting back. At the end of the day, only 5% of the total products we are able to receive from our customers uh, ends up in lentils. It's a very good ratio, considering that otherwise 100% uh, of the products will end up in lentils. Uh, these are the data uh, that I was uh, sharing with you. These are the guys working together with us at the cooperative, really nice people. Uh, the very good point is the conversion rate. Imagine that every 10 pieces sold on our website, seven came back as user clothes from our customers. So it's something that our customers really uh, are enjoying to participate, both to getting a discount and both to track how we are using uh, this item. So for us in CY, sustainability uh, means transparency. So we uh, are really committed to provide to our customer as many information as we can on how we are treating the user clothes we are collecting. This is really important because out of the sudden, a really great Italian retailers or sporty chains has approached us to ask if we can support them on organizing the same uh, model for the distribution. CY is really tiny company, so we, are, we cannot have an impact uh, on the economy. But imagine we are dealing with the first retailer in Italy, and we are dealing with one of the major sporty chains uh, with our model. So in this particular way, we are trying to apply exactly the same model to organizations that can definitely, definitely do the next step. So once again, referring to the network, to the uh, to the relations, it's crucial then to extend this uh, news to other organizations in order to maximize uh, the potential of a very good idea. So at the, at the very beginning, we had this very good idea, but uh, if it remains under the CY uh, hat, okay, it's it's. It's, it's just a minimal impact. But if you want to have a very good result, uh, we are now trying to extend to very big player the same idea. Um, the model seems to be really appreciated with the chance no, to record a documentary that is available on uh, Sky Documentary. Uh, we have been able to tell our story to major uh, well-known press, uh, Vanity Fair, uh, to Forbes, uh, to Corriere della Sena Rinascente, so, uh, Repubblica Italian uh, Press, and this helped a lot to spread our story. So once again, the network is crucial, even considering the, um, the journalists, the press, the, the newspapers. So the more you are able to involve the people, the more you are able to amplify the message. And now we need absolutely to amplify our message. Imagine that uh, we wait nothing. Our, our turnover is still uh, ridiculous considering the potential of the market. If you took a look at the, in this case, no, is the green fashion market, uh, 2023, it's $8.25 billion dex team uh, of the sales generated by the green fashion. We don't win nothing, but my dream is now to attract even more brands, more and more brands, uh, to become part of this uh, uh, refree model to have an impact. Okay, nowadays we are distributing our product uh, uh, across physical store in Italy and through uh, digital platforms, especially UX, uh, that has uh, scouted, uh, scouted uh, us for our green approach. Same for Slow Nature, that is another web platform. Same for Rinascente, this, it, it's in Italian uh, wholesaler, that has designed to uh, include our brand CY with, among the other brands, uh, because of our vision, because of our story. So message from, from, from me to you guys is no matter how small you are, don't fall to compromises, don't compromise. If you got an, a good idea, sooner or later, 
the results will come, no? Uh, I would say we are in the middle of the mist now, from being a very good idea and to become something more structured. But at the end of the day, the message is, uh, is going to be spread. Okay. There are a lot of brands, no? As uh, Beatrice was saying, uh, that are becoming uh, circular in a way, if not born circular. Uh, she mentioned um, Patagonia, that in a way she was born uh, circular. Uh, Patagonia was born circular previous than circular and sustainability were even two adjectives of the vocabulary. So this was their vision 40 years ago. And fortunately, they are still a leader of this vision. No? Uh, there are a lot of organic pieces of clothing, Ecoalf, uh, Outernon, amazing example of brands doing uh, on the fashion industry and a superb, uh, a superb job. So I recommend you to take a look at all these no? organic pictures, Ecoalf, uh, Outernon, because they are doing an excellent job on doing things uh, on the right way and communicating a message on the right way. So we are not doing this uh, just to make business. We are doing this uh, to try to change uh, the status quo. Most, impar most important thing, without a team, you cannot do nothing, no? So uh, the most important thing is that we are trying to approach the market in a different way, recycling in a way people that were, wor were working for big organization and they've been kicked out from the organization. Pretty much all the people that you can see here on the screen were working from uh, uh, some of the major fashion brands uh, on the market and for a reason or another, they, they have been fired. For me, sustainability and circularity is not only an, I know, an environmental problem, it's even a social and a human problem, no? Uh, we are trying to apply exactly the same logic on the business model, on the fabrication, on the products we are producing, but also on the people that are working for us. So uh, we aim to be circular, on products and on people. And this is really important for me, really credible at the end of the day. I hope it has been uh, at least uh, at least interesting and not boring. Uh, let me know if you can go through some questions. I already seen some of them on the, on the Q&A section. Uh, so, uh, Spettatore Anonimo, my friend, uh, was it a strategic decision to start uh, with Beachwear? Yes, uh, reason why. I was leading, uh, I was the business unit director of uh, uh, a Beachwear business unit within this uh, big American corporation I was mentioning. So we started from the product category as uh, I knew the best, uh, I knew the most. Then we are now extending to a lot of other products. So we are now producing even coats uh, here on the shoulders. I got a lot of products, uh, uh, pile, sweatshirt. So we are trying to uh, expand the product categories uh, to include uh, even more products. Uh, it's really important for me to include other categories, even because we have the capability to recycle uh, a lot of products, but not only on the fashion industry now, but even on the garment, on the furniture, on the sports, on the sports uh, um, tools. So uh, going forward, uh, I really would like to extend the refree model, so the circular system, uh, to other to other goods, to other categories. Diana, uh, do you think that the fashion industry can become sustainable in the future? Um, it's a good question. I think that 100% sustainable won't be but we can do our best to reduce uh, a lot uh, and we can really achieve very good results, uh, um, the, the footprint of the industry. Uh, I hope uh, to be wrong, but uh, I'm not sure if we will be able to reduce uh, 100% the impact of the industry. Imagine uh, the water consumption, the chemistry, uh, the, uh, the tanning, uh, the distribution, uh, the leftovers at the end of the season, uh, so it's really hard to get uh, to, to get to a zero point, but we can do our best to reduce it. Uh, there are a lot of systems already uh, in action no? to track how we are behaving, and the B Corp certification is one of these. Uh, is one of those. So you can track a lot of areas 
and make adjustment to your um, business model. So one of the good things of the big corps is that they give you a, a rating, but then the rating, it will be reconfirmed in three years. And during those three years, you got to work to improve the rating. So the name of the game is to get a better rating every three, three years, uh, creating a kind of uh, um, better, better future. Can I add one thing about this uh, luxury, the question about luxury? Yep. Uh, because uh, I don't know, Diana, if you heard about uh, Salvatore Ferragamo and what he's doing in Italy with the um, textile from orange fiber, so the fibers coming from the oran oranges. So they, I think they, the luxury brands are, uh, are making changes in terms of also materials uh, uh, they use because now there, there, is this, um, there are many firms that are using uh, uh, fruits and vegetables to make new uh, textile fibers. Uh, do you think, Albert, that these, are, um, these input uh, will, uh, will be more and more adopted by established firms? I think so. Uh, on top of Orange Fiber, no? that is the firm that you are mentioning, of Erika, that is the founder, there are a lot of other examples. So there is a kind of uh, fake leather that uh, uh, is uh, obtained by the cactus of a Mexican corp uh, company. There are a lot of very good ideas on the market. As of today, we are talking about niches. So uh, big brands are now beginning to add uh, a line, a couple of products, uh, just a hint of recycled items uh, or uh, sustainable materials uh, on the mix of the product fuses, no? Somewhere it's just the beginning. Start. We need to start somewhere. As well we need changes, to start. We need, we can... <laughs> it's really difficult to get a zero emission system at the end of the day, but uh, there's, no, there's no reason to not try. So I am absolutely positive. I'm not sure if we will reach zero, but there's no need to not try to reach zero. Although zero, zero, is, I think it's completely impossible because it's of impossible. Uh, the law of like uh, everything we do is already <laughs> polluting. But yeah, at least reduce as much as we can and uh, that, like closing this loop of resources. So if you already use uh, inputs that are comes from uh, natural organic materials, then uh, the, the your product, your textile would then we, when, when it ends in the landfill, then it may impact much, much less, I guess. But if you go by grade, no, first point, use a qualitative material. If you buy something that it's true, it's a little more, more expensive, but it's true, it will long lasting in the future. It's already one result. So if you buy something that you wear five times, then you throw it away, it's a failure. You got to buy something with the idea, you, you, you have the pleasure to wear it for two years at least. Okay, so I really like Patagonia that now is pushing much more on the repairing of the used garments, much more on the buying of new items. So this is the winning solution. Then for sure, there will be someone needing a new raincoat, a new this jacket. Is slowing, slowing the resource loops. It's absolutely, slowing. absolutely. But the winning topic is, Produce something long lasting, point number one. Point number two, while producing something long lasting, choose the lowest impact solution available. Point number three, it's not only about the fabric, it's about the whole chain. It's about the consumer, that it's not a consumer, but it's a customer if you want to consider it a, a customer. So a consumer should not consume full stop should be part of the chain and then should give to someone else the product or to allow someone else to do something differently with the product that he or she has used it, you know? This is for me the key. Not for sure consider just the material, just the fabric, just the, but consider the whole chain and then the life of the product and then what's going to happen next. For instance, uh, try to use as much more as possible just one component to produce your product. If you got 100% cotton t-shirt, it will be much more easier to do something new as a second line of the same garment. If you got a garment that is polyester, polyamide, cotton, elastana, it's a way more difficult to give a second life to the object. 
Okay, so if you go to the fast fashion, just to mention some, <laughs> we don't mention <laughs> no fast fashion. Uh, <laughs> of course, uh, they are proposing uh, products with a with the low price that not always goes uh, with sustainable products. Uh, I don't want to say that they are the evil. For sure, they are not the evil. Okay, but this is not the market segment uh, where you can do the most to have the the, the, the sustainability. Theme. I think there are uh, many questions. Um, do you think that the fashion industry can become sustainable in the future? Done. Are you recycling the products uh, which are already produced? So it's really difficult, uh, unfortunately, nowadays uh, recycle one product that will become a new fashion product, a fashion item tomorrow. If you get back something that is uh, synthetic, you can produce a bench, you can produce uh, plastic objects, but it's really difficult to produce uh, new fashion items because of the process, because of the composition. If you get back some cotton, you can reuse them as food filling for, as I can say, for the um, sofas, for the, for the home, homeware industry. It's really difficult from an item to turn it in another item. Maybe in a short time, we'll be able to do that. So to reply to the question, as of today, we are turning the product that we are receiving into something else, but not apparel as of today. This is the point. We will do that in few times, but as of today, we are not able to do that. This is not only about us, it's about the industry. Very interesting questions, really. <laughs> about your future, <laughs> your future, your investments. <laughs> what are you planning to do? Uh, hold on. I'm trying to follow all the, you know, the thread of the, um, what kind of energy we're using. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to use um, solar uh, energy. It's not that easy. We are trying to apply solar energy, even for the, for the, um, for the lights uh, of the offices. Uh, for the production, uh, the milling company, the one that produces uh, the fabric, uh, are third-part uh, companies. So it's all, in this way, it's difficult to interact with all the uh, stakeholders of the all the chain. We are trying to do. Uh, in your opinion, would be a good solution for fashion brands to get rid of the seasonal collection? So one of the most stupid things uh, that I personally think you know it's a characteristic of the fashion industry is the seasonality of the of the lines we are selling on sale the products when you most need it you got the swimmer on sale during the summertime you got the raincoat on sale during the winter time and then you got in a in a moment where the seasonality are even more balanced you can have a cold season and a hot season but then uh, for me, it's, it's a kind of stupid thing to think about seasonality going forward on the fashion industry. Of course, you will need a rain jacket. Of course, you will need a swimmer piece, a summer t-shirt. But uh, going forward, uh, I think that will be less uh, seasonality on the fashion industry. And this will help, uh, no? This will help uh, to reduce uh, the seasonality end of season sale. Another stupid thing for me is the uh, Black Friday is a middle season sale because it's exactly in the moment when you need the most the product that you are discounting it. So you are forcing people to buy two things when maybe they just need one. So the most important thing for me is to give the right price to a product because the people is less incentivated to change the product with an higher rotation. So it costs a lot, you will use it a lot of time. Imagine to a car. You don't change car every four months because it costs a lot. It costs a fortune, no? So the renting, in a way, for me, is a way to incentivate. I'm not at the fan of the renting because it incentivates the turnover of the products. I prefer good quality, long-lasting products. Honestly, to, to to reply to Diana. Um, Patricia, help me with your question because we got a lot of questions. So, how do you get this idea of recycling in the first place? Uh, in the first place, so the idea was uh, a lot of brands are now focusing on uh, recycling materials. Uh, everyone is now looking for uh, GRS, uh, recycling products, uh, recycling yarns. 
But as I was saying, uh, the industry is about the whole chain. So the, you got the, where you are producing, you got for how many times your customer will wear your product, uh, you got a lot of uh, ideas. So the, the consequence of this was how we can use the product that is already out there. And so this was the idea at the beginning of the extra model, how to use what is already existing and how to extend the life cycle that products are already existing. Do you plan on moving to other industry? So honestly, I really would like to. We are such a small organization that we are start, now start to dig in on the fashion industry. So it will take time and fortune and capabilities to expand our model to other categories. I really hope to have the strength to do that. For the very beginning, we are focusing on fashion. Uh, what can be done to make sustainable choices more affordable? Mm. Good question. First of all, think at how many times you can wear a good quality items. If you divide the cost, the price ticket of the item for the times you wear it, you will get a way lower uh, worn cost than a fast fashion items you wear just two times. So buy a 39 euros t-shirt, you wear it 20 times, the cost of every time you wear it uh, is lower than if you buy five euros garment and you wear it two times. So it's a matter of uh, uh, try to make your calculation and you will see that uh, good quality products uh, costs less yourself for your pocket for the environment uh, than low quality products. So I always incentivate you to do this calculation. Was a question we didn't answer. Is the circular economy always sustainable and fair? Mm. It's, it's a matter of definition. <laughs> this, is the academic side. this is the academic side. <laughs> it's a philosophical question. Uh, we will discover. Who knows? At, at the end of the day, it's good to have the idea that uh, with the resources already existing, we should do something differently. So we cannot uh, just uh, base our production and consumption model on I produce, I, cons I consume, I produce, I consume. No, I produce, I use, and then I produce something differently, and then I consume. So uh, it's a good question, but the reply is really difficult. I think, yeah, it's a matter of definition, as we said during the first part, like what is sustainable? Like we, we need to, to define some indicators and fair, what is fair? Is it something respectful of planet and of people uh, in maybe probably like now the the, the 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 scholars are introducing also the human dimension of circular like which is the is the are circular entrepreneurs also uh, interested in uh, um, creating <laughs> wellness in people and in general to have an impact on the society like as you said your your uh, product, your the cooper, your working with the co uh, cooperative insieme. Why did you choose a cooperative instead of another firm? Uh, is there also a matter of ethics or? It's a matter of uh, values. Uh, no, they are doing an excellent job, uh, and at the same time, so for us is sorting user garments, but at the same time they are reintroducing on the job field people uh, that are in difficulties. So there are people that uh, just exit the jail. There are people that has a psychological problem and they are reintroducing people that has a, um, addiction to drugs. So they are, uh, thanks to Servizi Sociali, also working on the people that are working within the system. So for me, it was important uh, at the time to choose a partner that uh, share a vision of Okay, the environment, first place, but then the people that uh, are part of this, you know, unicum in a way. So, uh, as I said, sustainable is uh, in most of the cases related to environmental stuff. But sustainable for me, it's at the same level for environment and for people and society. So we got to change a little bit our point of view on sustainability and sustainable things. So sustainable is for the planet and for the people. So every time we are trying, we are asked to take a decision, we are trying to take a decision based on these two aspects, environment and people. So these aspects are really interrelated in your case. Maybe there are cases where they are not. So it really depends, but I doubt that someone that is, uh, uh, I mean, being 
interested in uh, uh, environmental progress, like in tackling the environmental problems and not being interested in human problems would also be a bit uh, weird <laughs> in some sense. But but then it always depends on the business model, on the firm. So uh, yeah, it's uh, an open question. So the question that is really interesting of uh, Isan, uh, do you think the society is moving, the society is uh, moving forward mm. towards greener <laughs> product uh, or is still going towards the brands with bigger exposure or budget? Let me say so, no? Uh, so for me, uh, the real innovation is brought by the smaller. The bigger visibility is brought by the bigger and the one with the economical capability. So the win-win situation is that every time a small organization enter in the, uh, how can I say, in the, in the in connection with the bigger one. No? And it's the same, I'll reply on the IPO um, question. So we are not planning to IPO ourselves on the near future because two of these uh, bigger organizations that are trying to use our refree model to program the user clothes uh, system uh, are now investing within our organization. So we are getting investment from people uh, that we are trying to support uh, with this uh, circular system. So once again, we're talking about a network. So I prefer, I prefer to receive uh, uh, investment and fund uh, from uh, uh, a client that is at the same time an investor that share the same vision rather than from a bank now, no? or from uh, who knows investors located, I don't know where. So once again, uh, you got to create your own network and then you, as a kind of puzzle, then you add a, a, a piece, then another piece, and then another piece, and then another piece. And then at the end of the day, you got the full scenery in front of you. It takes time, it's really complicated, it takes a lot of energy, I'm 15 years old, but it looks 40. <laughs> it's all about the energy it takes. So it's it's, it's energy consumption. And the education, uh, and the education as we are doing with the Institute of Alliance. <laughs> of course, uh, of course. Uh. Thank you. <laughs> and helping each other in this network. <laughs> Time for the last question. What can be done to make sustainable choices more affordable? Ah, it really depends, you know. I really hope it's not a matter of uh, uh, trending stuff. Uh, now, being sustainable, being green, uh, it's uh, trendy. It's really on fire. It's on demand. Uh, first of all, I hope it won't be a uh, bonfire. So it's now and in uh, two, day, two years, it will be gone. It has to be um, the pillar of every future discussion, point number one. Point number two, it has to become mainstream. Once it's mainstream, uh, the prices will be reduced, you know? Uh, it, it, it takes time, it takes time. I agree. And all the, the actors need to come together for that. To have this key objective in the future. So let's hope that uh, there will be more funds uh there will be more funds for uh, circular entrepreneurs there will be more uh, debate and more support also to startups and uh, I, let's hope that there will be this also a connection as you said with uh, from mm, small firms and uh, the, the startups and the big firms and established firms rather than big established firms that are looking to forward that uh, would like to to innovate and thanks for uh, for your innovation you brought in the market. Thank you for the chance to share the, the, the ideas with you. Yeah, thank oh, you very much, yeah. Alberto. Thank you very much, Beatrice. On behalf of easy to you it was a great session. I have to say I'm I'm completely inspired and uh, I have so many, uh, made so many notes and I really like the triple bottom line, Beatrice. It's a, a really good thing. And the one takeaway message uh, for us and easy to you and for everybody, I think in front of the screens really is um, to amplify the message and to raise the awareness. And uh, I think uh, all of us can do um, our best to, to do that and to really improve and um, yeah, make things work for, for our whole planet, for all of us. So thank you very much, it was fantastic. <laughs> Now, thank you to the very lively audience. You were doing really great. Thank you for all your questions and uh, comments. 
in the chat now and before. Really good. Yes, and uh, don't forget to give feedback because we want to learn, we want to make the virtual lecture series innovation as interesting as possible for you. So please give us uh, your feedback and then we can design the next session uh, in six months time uh, as, uh, as you like it. Okay. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.